So, I've already talked about the legend of Tyrandia twice. Once in my Random DOS game encounter of it for the Random DOS game show, and once for my new series 100 Worthwhile DOS Games. So, why am I making a third video? That's a very good question. I'll totally have a response for you. But first we go back to 1980, when a husband and wife team of Roberta and Ken Williams decided, hey, it'd be a good idea to make a fantasy adventure game. This fantasy adventure game was called The Wizard and the Princess, and was a prelude of sorts to a series called King's Quest. So why is that relevant at all? Well, by the time The Legend of Kyrandia rolled out, King's Quest was one of the best-selling point-and-click adventure game series out there. In fact, it was one of the best-selling game series. So yeah, there was money to be made, and Westwood realised that. Kyrandia is pretty unabashed with its influences. It's a King's Quest game, or at least it tries to be a King's Quest game with a simplified interface. One thing it did have was far prettier graphics and sound compared to its contemporaries at the time. This was 1992. Point and click adventure games and multimedia in general were only just starting to kick off. The evil jester Malcolm has broken free of his imprisonment for being an evil jester, presumably. And he's stolen all the magic. So it's up to our brave Prince Brandon to fulfil his destiny and become the only person who can stop him, for some reason. Unfortunately for the powers that be who have chosen Brandon to be their pawn in this game of destiny, Brandon is one of the dimmest, most unlikable protagonists out there. Okay, maybe unlikable is a bit much. He bullies children and is generally quite annoying. But he's mostly dim-witted and clueless. Brandon's relative has been turned to stone, along with many other key figures in the land of Kyrandia. So Brandon is quite annoyed at this, and decides that he's going to have to go and put a stop to this because a magic tree told him to. I think if Brandon encountered a lemming, and the lemming threw itself off a cliff, that would be the end of Prince Brandon. Fortunately, lemmings do not appear in Kyrandia. The tree gives him a big information dump about the background and what he's meant to do, and Brandon understands none of it. So he goes and he finds Bryn, some sort of sorceress who will hopefully explain everything to him. He bumbles around the local forest, which all looks pretty similar, and unwittingly manages to fix things. But not without irritating everybody that he comes into contact with. All you need to do in Kyrandia is click things on the screen. There's no subject-object-verb system that was a holdover from the text parser games. Everything is visual. What this also means is that the conversations are entirely linear. You can't make any choices like you would with LucasArts games. It's all very simple and easy, just like Brandon. Unfortunately, one of the problems with the inventory system is that it's limited in capacity. And that kind of becomes a meta game because you need to figure out what it is that you need to carry. And sometimes it doesn't work out. You didn't bring the right thing along and you have managed to ruin the game for yourself. It gradually dawns on Brandon that he is indeed healing the land somehow with his application of gems and powers and such. His sister was literally told by Kalak, yep, you need to guide Brandon by the nose to where he needs to be. After annoying a few more characters who are quite colourful and amusing, Brandon learns how to put gems in a magic amulet. This amulet gives him powers, and he uses those powers to defeat the Jester eventually. Now you're probably wondering, why was this super powerful Jester defeated by this simple prince? And the honest answer is because the evil Jester Malcolm doesn't really take Brandon seriously. And if I was an evil villain taking over the land of Kyrandia, I probably wouldn't take Brandon seriously either. He's a stealth hero. Nobody believes that he's actually going to be the destined hero. Except for a handful of people who are sort of half-believing and are like, yeah, I hope Brandon can do this. Maybe. Possibly. The puzzles themselves are merely okay. It's a lot of trial and error, and there are a lot of things that can kill Brandon. 
But because you don't particularly like Brandon or bond with him, it's quite enjoyable to watch him die over and over again. As well as the superb graphics of Kyrandia, kudos has to be given to the excellent voice acting and the wonderful musical score, which I found out after the fact, thanks to one of my subscribers, that it was composed by Frank Klepaki of Command & Conquer fame. Yeah, Frank! Good stuff. You go through level after level and there's a series of obnoxious puzzle-solving elements that you can essentially skip with an FAQ. What Kyrandia is really about is trial and error. You immerse yourself in the land and you enjoy your romp through these various forests and fantasy realms and eventually you stumble across the right combination of things. One of the worst puzzle solving elements is in order to get a magical flute. You have to enter a series of gems that you collect around the land into a bowl. You have to enter them in the right order. The order changes randomly based on which game you have so there's no solution. You just have to strike lucky on what is essentially a gem-based code combination. But this is only a taster for the real trouble to come. The Fireberry Caverns. The damn Fireberry Caverns. Possibly the worst point-and-click adventure puzzle I have ever seen. Which grinds the game down to a screeching halt. The Fireberry Caverns are full of monsters that are quite happy to kill Brandon if darkness falls. If you run out of fireberries, which you have to place on the ground, then darkness will inevitably fall and kill Brandon. You get the fireberries from berry bushes that are spaced out at intervals in this maze-like, cave-like structure that doesn't really differentiate much, so you get hideously lost unless you map it out by pen or follow an FAQ which has a list of directions to follow and berries to place, which is as long as your arm. And even with an FAQ, it can take you up to 30 minutes to complete this one puzzle. And it utterly kills the game. Despite the padding, the game is rather short. You can complete it in a few hours, or a few more hours if you take your time with it and really immerse yourself. And despite me bad-mouthing certain elements of the game, and in general the puzzle solving, if you have a decent FAQ, it's still an enchanting romp through an adventure world that isn't by Sierra or LucasArts. Kyrandia would go on to spawn two more in the series. And apparently, I haven't played it yet, but one of my subscribers informs me that the second game is even better. So I'll eventually get round to playing that and inevitably talking about it. But in the meantime, despite the terrible protagonist, despite the irritating puzzles, and despite how long it is in the tooth now, Kyrandia really has a certain je ne sais quoi to it. A certain fantastical element that just draws you in and makes you appreciate it. Despite its flaws. So I'd recommend it for any point and click adventure game fan, or any fantasy fan who just wants to go into a high fantasy world and become that hapless prince who finally saves everybody from everything.